Hey, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. You're watching 100% Andy UFC. If you don't mind, please subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up and please comment down below if you're new. Be part of the channel. This is the Newcastle versus Burnley match preview at St James's Park this Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff. And this is the way these videos go about. So first up, I'll talk about my club, Newcastle United. I'll talk about where we are on the table. I'll talk about whether I'm confident or not that we're going to get something from the game. Players to watch out for, so I'll give you a player focus, a player who I think is good enough to maybe get a result on the weekend. And then I'll give a final start in 11, a team that I think Steve Bruce will field on the weekend. And then second part of the video, I'll talk about Burnley, which in case I'll talk about, you know, how we do against you's lot, where you're in the league. I'll talk about, you know, players to watch out for, how Sean Dyche is going to go about the game. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my full uh, score prediction. And then it's up to you guys to put your comments down below. So let's just jump straight into it. So this Saturday, we'll take on Burnley at St James's Park. And I have to say, normally, I'm quite upbeat for these sort of games against the likes of a Burnley because it's a game that we must win. But we aren't really in a good place right now. We're not really playing the best football. And we haven't won a Premier League game since the 18th of January. And that was against Chelsea in a 1-0 win when Isaac Hayden scored a late winner but even in that game I didn't think we played really well and the results lately since then have been fantastic you know we've had a replay against Oxford and if you're looking at our last three results we actually lost 1-0 away to Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park we should have lost by more and then before that we lost away to Arsenal 4-0 again could have lost by more and then we also beat Oxford in League One side but we only won in extra time so we're not really in a good place right now in terms of results. Before the Arsenal result, we were actually eight games unbeaten. But I've always said, I don't know how, because the football has been absolutely horrendous under Steve Bruce. And we don't seem to have a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I said that in the match review against Crystal Palace, and I still stand by that. And for me, the reason why we are losing games is because we're playing a formation which doesn't really suit the players anymore and obviously with Steve Bruce coming in to replace Rafa it did work under him but under Steve Bruce we've been found out and the players don't seem to be really settling anymore we don't really seem to be you know threatening in opposition we don't really attack as much we're not working the goalkeeper enough and we're getting overrun in that midfield and the defence is practically under a lot of pressure and once you know the pressure is real and we're under siege, we end up conceding goals. And if it wasn't for Martin Dubravka, who for me is the one who you should watch out for if you're a Burnley fan, because he's the one who's been keeping us in games. And if it wasn't for him, then for me, we'd be in the relegation zone. And the only reason why we're not in the relegation zone is because we have rover looking games and we've picked up points. And of course, the likes of Aston Villa and West Ham simply haven't really been as good as they should be this season. And, of course, the table doesn't lie. You know, going into the match, as you can see, we're on uh, 31 points. We're in 14th place. We're only seven points off the relegation zone. So, you know, it has got that little bit more real that while we're not picking up points, teams below will start picking up points and we will be, you know, caught up. And going into the match against Burnley, our record is not so good, I would say. And hope of Burnley, we've only beaten them once, but then albeit we've only played them a few times uh, in the Premier League era. We only started playing them back in 2014, and in that time we've only beaten them once at home, and that was last season. Uh, we did beat them 2 0, all thanks to uh, a goal by Sean Longstaff and that absolute world of a goal by Fabian Shaw. He got goal of the season, and rightly so. What a finish that was! I've never seen a goal like that ever scored that from that far out and uh, that was an absolute rocket. Tom Heaton had absolutely no chance and uh, we did deserve to win You know that game on the night. But this season we also have played Burnley at Turf Moor. We lost by a goal to nil and I have to say it was an undeserved result because the referee gave a corner which led to Burnley's goal which for me was actually a goal kick. I still stand by that and but we should have defended better and Burnley put the ball in the back of the net and of course just like us you know, they're defined on winning home games. And since then, Burnley, you know, they're in a good moment and we aren't. And that's that time when we played Burnley, we were in a good moment. We were winning games. But now, confidence just seems to have gone. And, you know, the winning feelings just gone. And the honeymoon period seems to have ended with Steve Bruce. And the game, you know, on the weekend against Burnley is, for me, a crucial one. You know, it's a 
a game where we are expecting, you know, three points. But, you know, I can't be confident, you know, the way in which we're playing. You know, we're not really threatening enough. And when you don't do that and you don't make the necessary changes that you should be making, you know, as a manager, then it's going to cost him. And it has in the last couple of games. And I've said, you know, for the last four or five months now, if not longer, that Joe Linton should not be starting games. You know, he's devoid of confidence and we've only got, well, he's only got one goal this season. And if you're a Burnley fan looking at that, you must be very confident. Alan St. Maximin, again, he's only got one in the Premier League and Almiron, you know, he's scored a couple, but like it's not enough compared to last season when we had Rondon and Perez. They had over 20 plus, you know, they scored over 10 you know, plus goals between them, you know, last season, double figures, whereas this, so far this season, it's been a stark contrast and it's with defence really that's been chipping in the goals and getting where the, you know, the goals to you know, lift up the table. If it wasn't for the defence in the midfield chipping in, then for me would, like I say, be in the bottom three and the formation needs to change. You know, we seem to play with a five at the back and, you know, we like to defend from the off and we like to hit teams on the counter-attack and I can't see Steve Bruce you know, changing the formation. I'd love to see Steve Bruce you know, go positive to match Burnley and, you know, go for it, be open and say right where the home side, you know, you're Burnley, albeit you've got more points, but we should be winning this game, you know. We want to see a team, you know, that tries and we're not seeing that at the moment, you know. We don't seem to have, you know, that plan to want to, you know, get get into teams' faces, you know. The minute we go 1-0 down, we seem to collapse, that's it, you know, but... It's the always opposite. If we win the game, if we take the lead, then it's a case of we sit back and then we soak up the pressure and we'll try and get the second. But that's not been the case lately. Um, but honestly, you know, going into the game, I, I kind of be confident because I can't see Steve Bruce changing the formation. I think he'll stick uh, with the five at the back. Uh, my player focus, if there's any Burnley fans watching, I'm going to say Alan St. Maximin. You know, he's the one who's got the tricks. He's got the skill. He's the one who, you know, on his day, he can take defenders out of the game. He, he's got that pace which can frighten defenders and he's not scared to have a go if you give him a chance. If you give him that opportunity, if you give him the space, then, you know, he's a one to, you know, want to try and get with the lead, try and get with the goal, but nine times out of ten, you know, we're spending most of the game, you know, defending and players, you know, up front have to track back and when you play defensive, that's just the way it is, but, you know, the rest of them for me just don't look like scoring. And uh, I'm now going to draw up my start 11 for the game on Saturday. Now, I am going to go with the five at the back. Now, I'm going to go in goal, Martin Dubravka. Left back, Danny Rose. Right wing back, Matt Ritchie. Me back three. First up, Florian Lejeune. Captain, Jamal Lasalle's. And to complete me back three, Federico Fernandez. Now me two in the middle. First up, Sean Longstaff. Partnered alongside him to complete me middle two is Isaac Hayden. Now on the left hand side, I'm going to go with Alan St. Maximin. On the right hand side, I'm going to go with. Al Miron and up front I'm going to go with Dwight Gale so that is my starting 11 for the game on Saturday as you can see I've made a couple of changes I've brought in Dwight Gale again for Joe Linton because he's simply not scoring goals and when you're not scoring goals Dwight Gale is just sitting on the bench and he's not really getting a chance he couldn't really make an impact against Crystal Palace because we were already 1-0 down. We were defending far too deep. And it's hard to come on as a you know as a replacement when you're 1-0 down and the rhythm just isn't there and he's not getting the service. And against Burnley, I feel like he's going to get more opportunities. And he didn't really start against Crystal Palace, which I was very surprised about. And he's persisted with Joe Linton. Steve Bruce has said that he's going to make changes. Now, I can't see him changing the formation as, as much as I'd love to see him do that. I think he'll probably go with the change of Dwight Gale or Mudu, one of the two, you know, he's, Joe Linton for me can't start games in that form, you know, his lack of confidence and when he's lack of confidence, you know, you've got to get him out the firing line and you've got to maybe let him analyse how the game is going off the bench and maybe bring him on in the second half if, if that's the way to do it. Um, I've also gone with 
Isaac Hayden uh, in the middle too. For me, why is he not playing games? He's one of our better players at the football club. He's a brick wall. You know, he can bring the ball down. And he, he's tidy. You know, he's very uh, calm on the ball and he'll look after the back three. Whereas Bentaleb, for me, just... I know we've signed him because Bruce seen him as a, a little bit more quality, but he's not really cutting it. He's... I would say he's an awful player, but he's a case of... He's not really fully match fit It's in terms of his pre-season. But right now, this is where the business end of the season comes about, where we need... You know, a solid side that's going to get with points and we can't afford to be overrun in that midfield. I could have replaced Sean Longstaff, but I didn't. I thought Sean Longstaff actually works better alongside Isaac Hayden because they've got that good partnership. And you've seen that, you know, against Chelsea uh, when Isaac Hayden got that late winner and Sean didn't actually look too bad. So, yes, it's a bit harsh that I've made Bentaleb look a bit of a scapegoat, but let's be fair, he's not been great in the last couple of games and... Danny Rose, people have said, you know, he looks a little bit sluggish, but again, he's a natural left back. He will get better. He just needs to um, have more positive people in terms of, you know, getting the servers up front and scoring the goals. And maybe the back three won't be put under so much pressure. Um, yes, you want to see him do more, but at this moment in time, I think it's the right thing to do. And um, that's how I'm going to go about the game, you know, on Saturday for a Newcastle point of view. Now we're going to look into Burnley, how they're getting on. So looking at the table, Burnley actually find themselves in 10th place. Uh, they're on 37 points. If they can get a result against us on Saturday, then they'll hit the magic 40 points mark. If they draw the game, it's not the end of the world. You know, they're pretty much safe now anyway. And um, they're having a very good season by their standards. They never expect to be in the European spot and if Burnley can stay up, I think, you know, Sean Dyche would be very, very happy with that. He's done a fantastic job, you know, for them this season, given that they've got a very limited budget and you know, they don't spend a lot of money. And the players that they've got for me are very championship-based, but they're very, very hard-working and they like to work as a team. And they're a very direct side and, you know, they're not 10th for no reason. They're there because they deserve to be there. Uh, Burnley's last three games, you know, they've beaten Bournemouth 3-0 at the Turf Moor Stadium. You know, I think they deserved to win the game, but the 3-0 scoreline, I think, was a bit harsh on Bournemouth. Watching back on Match of the Day, I thought some crucial VR decisions went against them, but they definitely did, you know, deserve to win that game. Before that, they did win 2-1 away at St Mary's, uh, so that was a definite good result for them, and that was on the international break, or the winter break, when we were not playing, and then before that, you know, they've drawn with Arsenal at Turf Moor, nil nil. so they've picked up seven points, you know, from the last three games, and they're unbeaten, you know, they're going to come to St James's Park full of confidence, and that's the last thing that we want, you know, when we're two games without a win in the Premier League, and Burnley are free unbeaten. You know, when you've got that sort of confidence and you that many games unbeaten, then you can't blame them for for them being sort of favourites. And uh, I'm going to say as a Newcastle fan, your favourites, you know, going into the game on Saturday, there's no question about it, you know, with that form. And Burnley, you know, as I said before, they're a very direct side. They're a side who like to get in your faces. Yes, they don't play the best football, but Burnley on Saturday will bully us. They will. When we've got the ball, we've got to pass it quickly. We've got to make sure that we don't you know, doodle on the ball and be sloppy because if we're sloppy, Burnley will punish us. And um, Burnley, are, you know, they, they like to give their role on the pitch and they do that. And Sean Dyche encourages that. You know, he, he always changes things up when it's going wrong, unlike Steve Bruce. And you've got to give him full credit for that. And, you know, going into the game, they, they tend to play like a 4 4 2. You know, they, they play two up front and they like to, um, you know, play off the last man as well. So Burnley, you know, they're, they're a very um, positive, direct side. and when they need to put the body on the line, they'll do that. That's the sort of side, you know, that Burnley are, you know, under Sean Dice and they like to call it Brexit football, but, you know, Burnley are very British, you know, they, they play the British, you know, side of football. They do the ugly way, but they'll also, you know, you know like to play positive. So you've got to give them a lot of credit for that. Um, going into uh, the match and looking at Burnley, you know, their squad, uh, there's three players that I've picked out. First up, my player in focus is Chris Wood. He's got 10 goals this season for Burnley, he's been there a couple of seasons now and he's really, um, you know, went from strength to strength, you know, since moving from Leeds United. He's the definite go-to man for goals and uh, if I'm not wrong, um, he was part of the goal uh, that they, well, we conceded down at Turf Moor as well. He's a big part of their season. Uh, he's got double figures. Yes, 10 isn't a lot of goals, but like nine times out of 10, he's, a, he's not the quickest player, but if you give him the correct service, he'll put the ball in the back of the net. And then next up, I've gone with Jay Rodriguez. He's got eight goals. Um, he likes to, you know, get forward from like the midfield. He's very attacking as well. And uh, obviously, he used to play for Burnley back in the day, and he's 
obviously been around the block, but he's got the Premier League experience and uh, he's chipping in with goals as well, helping out Chris Wood. So, you know, already they're doing better than Joe Linton. You know, the between them two, they've got 18 goals. And then obviously I've picked out Ashley Barnes, who is another striker for them. Uh, he's got six goals as well. He's another one who's not the quickest. He's not the, he's not the, you know, your Jamie Vard or anything like that, but he's um, very, very clinical, you know, when it comes to finishing. He, he's got an eye for goal and, you know, with Barnes and Chris Wood, they're the two that you've got to watch out for because if one of them gets some service and they get, you know, that one-on-one -on -one with Debraca, nine times out of ten, they're going to score. And we've got to be very careful because, you know, we've been leaking in goals. And in my last, um, you know, couple of games, we've conceded, what is it, five goals, which is not great. And Burnley will be looking at that thinking, you know, they've got every opportunity, you know, to put the ball in the back of the net. And obviously, Burnley will be wanting to get that first win, you know, at St James's Park. It's a thing they've never done in the Premier League era. And uh, they'll want to do... Um, you know, back-to-back -back wins and they'll want to do the double over us for the first time in Premier League history. And, um, you know, they, they know that they're only three points now off the magic 40-point mark, as I've said before. If they win the game, then they can, you know, think about Premier League football next season. Obviously, they can't go, you know, more up the table. They can't maybe look into the top seven if they want to, but I don't think they'll get that. But Burnley would be happy, you know, just to stay up. And Sean Dyche, not to forget, was under a lot of pressure uh, around the middle of the season, you know, when they were losing games, but he really has uh, steadied the ship and, the way that they buy as well in the windows is very, very um, shrewd. Uh, they know exactly what they're doing. And like I say, the way, the reason why Burnley win games is because Sean Dyche gets the best out of his squad. He changes it when it goes wrong. Unlike Steve Bruce, it's the tried and tested. You know, it's the keep on the same formation and play the same players, you know, that are out of form. But uh, that is Burnley. You know, that's how they're going to go to the game. You know, they're going to be no pushovers. They're going to want to, you know, win every ball, win every tackle. And they're going to want to um, come away from St James's Park with all three points, just like we do. And um, of course, we're under more pressure because not the fact we're at home, but the fact that we've not won since the 18th of January. We're two games, you know, without a win, and um, we've never really looked like scoring, you know, in those last couple of games. And we had a replay, and we went extra time against Oxford, so we're not really in a good place. And uh, I know this has been a bit of a long preview, but like it's a case of I've had to address a few situations, but. You know, my final score prediction, I want to stay positive. We should be looking to win this game, but I'm very realistic to know that Burnley are a very good side. Unfortunately, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. I think as long as we stop the rot of defeats and we're picking up points, another point on the board would be great. I know Villa are in the uh, Carabao Cup final as well on Sunday, so they're not playing. I know West Ham are playing Southampton as well. So obviously if Southampton win, they've got points, but if we can pick up a point, I think we'll go, is it eight points? Or seven points, or it might remain the same, something like that, um, away from the relegation zone. As long as we don't lose the game, if we lose the game, it's disaster. If we can win the game, fantastic. You know, it's a it's a, a game which we must win. But I've got to be realistic at the same time to say that Burnley are a very very good side. You know, they play good football, and as I've said before, they're no mugs, and uh, they'll be wanting to you know pick up maximum points from this game. You know, on Saturday, and as I said before, if we can stop the rot of defeats and gain a little bit more confidence then that would be great. Goal scorers, I'm actually going to say Chris Wood for Burnley and I'm going to say Alan St. Maximin or Almiron for the Toon. So uh, let me know your score predictions down below in the comments. Let me know um, who you think will start the game. Do you think Steve Bruce will change the formation? Is there any Burnley fans watching? What do you think the score is going to be? And uh, what is your plans for the rest of the season? Follow me on social media. Please subscribe on all that good stuff. And I'll see you all for the quick thought and the review in the next couple of days. Enjoy the game. How are the lads?